All right. Here is Castle Quest 2. It's a text-based game, and it's incredibly addictive. And I'm going to give a 5 to 10 minute overview of the game. So we start off here by logging in. Alright, where to start? Okay, up here you see that we have all of our resources. Resources are netted by an hourly income, which is based on real time, and you don't actually have to be logged in to get them. The amount of resources you make an hour is completely determined by the amount of workers you have in each of the four specific categories, brimstone, crystal, essence, and granite. And you can use these resources to summon creature amulets, you know, go to the online marketplace and bid on items there, or buy creatures from other players, or buy gems, you know, whatever it is that you need. And down here you have your power. Um, your power income is based on the total number of workers you have and the total number or the total amount of power balance you have which goes from 20% to 200% the higher number meaning more power balance or more power income per hour your power balance is increased by sending out an attacking creature and having your opponent probably kill it which this is often referred to as exchanging exchanging is probably the easiest way to level up in the game and become stronger Sending out a creature requires a certain amount of power, depending on the creature and its level. The higher the creature and level, the more power. And you can also send out raids, which would be sending out multiple creatures at a target, and you can target their resources and take them as your own, but you might have to wait like a full raid cycle, which is 24 hours, depending on how soon the mage decides to defend. There are four classes of mages. Forest, Earth, Death, and Air. And each class has its own set of creatures. You know, Forest might have like imps and clerics, and then Earth has like Eimlings and Smith, and Death has like zombies and diabolics, and Air would have like dragons and spirits. Alright, under the News tab, we can see basically everything that's recent, you know, from donations or kingdom information or, you know, game announcements, outgoing battle reports, um, with donations, you can only donate and receive donations at level 12. And you can donate resources, amulets, gems, you know. Alright. And then we have our battles tab. And we can see incoming battles right here and outgoing battles right here. And then these are the recent ones that you've already defended and uh, launched. But to defend a battle, you just click on defend. And then you, let's say I want to fight off this creature with my number six creature right here. So then you would just put a six in this box. And then you put in whatever number that is. So it would be seven. And you hit defend. And you see I got so much creature experience right here. So usually it's a lot more, but this guy's attacked me a few times in the last 24 hours. So it's less. But... My creature gained 281 experience, and then this is like your personal experience. But see, I didn't gain any power balance because my power balance is already at 200%, so you can't gain any more past that. Under your character tab, you have you have like your class, your level, the experience that you have total, and your power balance. Remember, your power balance determines how much power you make an hour. Um, here's your skill points. I'm an earth mage, so I'm going to mainly want to be investing my skill points into earth. And the thing about investing it into whatever class you are is one point yields like a two-point result for your main skill. So if I put ten points, which you get ten points every time you level up uh, into my main skill, it would actually give me 20 points. So it's like a two-for-one kind of thing. But if I would have put it into like air, it would have only given me one-for-one one because I'm an earth mage. And the point of having a secondary skill, like I have my air magic up there, is because at certain points in your skills, once they get high enough, you have to beat a challenge that you can't beat with that class. So like, because your creatures require so much of a certain skill. So with my earth magic, you know, being 540, in order to beat my 450 challenge, I needed to use air creatures because my earth creature doesn't affect my earth challenge. Assuming that makes sense... 
also under here you can you know learn curses or you know and here's your income down here all right I'm not gonna open my creatures tab because even though I kind of showed you my list it's best to keep it private you know it protects me a little more but basically you can see your creatures there you can resurrect them you can see their status you know if they're defending and kingdom offense or if they're in defense slots you know whatever they're doing and items is where you can see the items that your creatures can equip and the enchantments on those items so amulets amulets are like um kind of like a seal that traps a creature and item in place and in order to use in order to break that seal so you can have the creature and use the items and stuff you have to pay so much resources but the uh, thing about amulets is that you can donate amulets and stuff but once you use the amulet you can't turn that item or creature back into an amulet to donate so you have to be careful about what you're using you know um and you need so much skill and so much level to use different creature amulets um spellbook here you can you know summon creatures that your skills high enough for or you know here's your income it's actually where you summon your workers which costs so much essence um you can do power spells here but if you're like me and you do power spells you'll probably get crap but you know there's people out there that get good items uh here's your active curses but you don't have to worry about that till you're level 25 and i'm not really going to go into that in this video um Buildings, you know, you can see which buildings you can construct because after you gain a level or two, you might get a new building to build, which would go to like your spell book or increase the amount of creatures you can have, you know. But I already have all mine constructed, but you build those with granite, and that's what your granite's for. Um, you can go to your arcane chamber and see your gem, but you don't get this until level 30, so it's not really something I'm really going to go into. Defense slots. Um, with defense slots, um, they increase the creature's defense to an element by 35%, and each creature requires a certain level of defense slot in order to inhabit the slot. One creature per slot, and the creature can't be in more than one slot. It's quite a strategy for like a mage that would need help fending off raiders and stuff. So like if I put a creature in this air defense slot, it would increase its air defense by 35%. And defenses are like... If a creature has zero defense to an elemental, that means that that elemental will do 1.5 times the damage listed. If it had 50%, it would do the damage listed, and if it has 100%, it would do half of the damage listed. So, I mean, you play your defenses to win your battle, because each mage would have a weakness to certain creatures, obviously. Um, your kingdom tab, I'm not really going to go into, because... It's it's pretty basic stuff, you know, it shows your kingdom, then you have your pub, your marketplace, your post office, you know, just really basic stuff. Um, other players, probably the best way to level is to go to the other players tab over here and you click find a random online target. And so then you find a mage and you would launch launch an exchanger at him, which keep in mind that means that your creature is probably going to die, you know, but you get experience. And then you can resurrect your creature and send it out to someone else and get more experience, but it's going to cost you power. It's probably the fastest way to level. Uh, the Rhodia tab shows all the current rankings as well as uh, the rankings from last age. Like, this is all updated every hour. You know, go figure. Um, <laughs> anyways... Uh, traveling is probably the most uh, controversial issue in the game, whether or not it should be replaced with something more conventional. And what traveling is, is you can go around and look for creature encounters, and if you can fend off the creature encounter, you get so much resources, you know. Or you might get a travel gem, which you can trade to root off for power. You know, it's I'm not really going to go into that either, because this is just a basic guide. And I guess if you need any more assistance, you can go to Stonehenge, which is what you start in, and you can go in the pub and post a question. <clears throat> you just go up here and you post new topic and if Spike and Dominic and CS are feeling generous they probably won't ban you for it and if mages are feeling helpful they won't flame you and they might actually provide input that is relative to your question but I think I've covered the basics so I'm gonna end this video before it gets too long and uh, hope to see you around